Camping introduced me to boating, and boating introduced me to kayaks. After a few summers out on the water, I wanted my own kayak. My kayak is a Dagger Element 11-2. When I got my own kayak, my dad found a tandem kayak for him and my mom to get out on the water. With these kayaks around, it is important to know water safety in general and small watercraft safety in particular. Accidents may happen, but preparation and good sense help keep them from being a disaster. Today, we'll go over some basic safety rules for small watercraft. Rule number one, learn to swim. According to the American Red Cross, the first rule of water safety is learning to swim. In addition to knowing, how to, knowing a basic stroke, it is important to know how to float. Float techniques can help you conserve your energy while waiting for assistance in the water. This is my friend Mr. Bunny and he knows how to float. This is your standard float position. Mr. Bunny's head is back, chin up, his arms are perpendicular to his body, and his belly is up. His legs are relaxed. If Mr. Bunny were in the water right now, he would definitely be floating. So remember, when you're trying to float, chin up, arms out and relaxed, belly up, and legs relaxed. You will be able to float. Rule number two, wear a Coast Guard approved personal flotation device. Having your own personal flotation device, or PFD, is a must for any time you're fishing, boating, or enjoying any water sports. There should be a PFD on board for each boater, so be sure to have one in your size. They make them in children's sizes and adult sizes, so you should have one on board at all times. Your PFD should be snug enough to protect, but not too snug to where you can't breathe properly. Obviously, by looking, you can probably tell that this is not my PFD. It's my mom's. One way you can tell is the ear trick. It's where you pull up on the shoulder straps and see if it goes over your ears. If it goes over your ears, it's too big. Let's try it. Okay, that's too big. Another way is when you pull it out in front of you, you shouldn't have more than a half an inch to an inch of space. Room enough to where you can breathe properly, but not too much. Also, if you just kind of twist it around, sort of, you can pretty much assume that this is too big. So, but like I said, we have three PFDs at my house. Wow, that was rough. Okay. This is my PFD, and it fits me much better than the other one. When you try the ear trick on this one, you can pull up on it and it doesn't come over my ears. When you pull it out in front of you, I don't have more than half an inch, so that part's good. And I can't twist the law and twist, twist around in it very much, so that's good. Now, many people ask themselves, why do people wear PFDs? I mean, they can swim. All they do is get in the way. Number one, they keep you floating. If you get knocked out, the PFD will, will keep your head out of water and can make all the difference. Two. A PFD can help you avoid hypothermia, a life-threatening condition in which your body rapidly loses heat. Rule number three, a PFD in a bright color such as orange, yellow, red, or like this blue, or one with reflective tape helps make you easier to find when people are looking for you. Rule number three, carry the right gear. Two things are required on board, one PFD for each boater and a whistle. The whistle is a recognized help signal. It can help people find you when they are looking for you or when they don't even know you're there. Be sure to always have a whistle. There is even a whistle code. Make sure everyone in your group knows the code. It goes like this. <whistles> Slow down. <whistles> Go to shore. <whistles> Capsize, take action for rescue. <whistles> that means you're approaching a powerboat or a jet ski. Other useful in Clatum, other useful Items to include are sun protection, duct tape patch holes, a mirror for daytime signaling, a line to help people in your boat or to tie your boat up to things, a bucket and a small boat to bail, 